it like working on the Drew Barrymore show with Drew. Oh. I mean, it's like the most um, wholesome work experience I've ever had in that like, she's just like, it feels like family now, you know, um, we end every show talking to the audience and we sit there and we hold hands and we talk to the, you know, talk to them. And there's just such kindness. If you come to the studio, which you should do, please come be my guest. It is well, like, um, it's just like this good energy place. Like, you know, you walk into a spa and you're like, Oh, it feels good in here. Like, it feels like that. It's just sunshine. And it's sort of like what we begin, we began talking about how, usually you just so slivers of yourself. I don't know if it's a fact that now I'm 43, um, that I get to be on every day with the, with the audience, with her, with Drew, who's so giving and kind, but I feel like there's not a part of myself I'm uncomfortable showing on this show, you know, for uh, vulnerable, funny, opinionated, angry about, you know, something, if something really is not okay, we go there. Um, it's just such a relief to be able to show every side. It doesn't shock me that you say it's sunshine. Like I, if I think Drew Barrymore plus Ross Matthews, I think sunshine. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I'm sure you're you're both self actualized people. Like you, I'm sure you have. But are you guys ever in a bad mood? Because I just don't see it from where I am. Um, let's see. Well, I wanted to find bad mood. You know, like of course, there's sadness. There's, um, we all have crap in our lives. You know that come on. And but the, the difference is, it's like. I don't know if, if I had like, I call it a real job, but like if I was a bank teller and I was suffering and sad and going, I would have to fake it to go into work and kind of smile and do it. But the thing about what, what I get to do and the job I get to do with Drew and what I've done for over 20 years now is that when I go to work, it's almost like I'm fueled by, by it. Like the, the job actually changes my chemistry. When we walk onto the Drew set, I can't fake it. It's because they're clapping and they're excited and we have a really interesting person on that day. And it's suddenly like, that changes me, that shifts my experience. And so we are incapable of faking it, even though Drew's a great actress, but we certainly have things going on in our lives and we're just made better by the show. That's a good way to put it. Do you have a favorite Drew Barrymore movie? Oh my God. You know, Fever Pitch is underrated. Never Been Kissed is perfection. Um, 50 first dates is the sweetest story. Um, there's a million others I could go through, but those three off the top of my head. Those are good. Yeah. Is there someone, I mean, you mentioned so many great people coming up on Hello Ross. Is there someone now with this new incarnation of, you know, this new podcast, like that you was just kind of on your hit list of someone you would love to just interview or, or I started you? I started a, to type a message to Diane Keaton in a DM on Instagram. She doesn't even follow me, but I started to type it and then I deleted it. Cause I'm like, I, what do you say? You know, I'd love to interview Diane Keaton. Um, she waved to me once at an, uh, a red carpet. It was Armani was getting a star in the fashion walk of fame, Beverly Hills. Anyway, that was my big moment. She like, hi. Um, and then uh, the Barefoot Contessa, I'd love to interview Ina Garden because she reminds me of my mom and I love to cook, you know, I have my recipes and, and everything. So I would love to talk to her, but and you know what? It could absolutely happen. Both of them could. I, I, I wasn't, uh, the majority of the people that I've listed to you, I was never going to bother them to be on the show. And I'm booking it myself through DMs, texting people. My husband, Wellington says, try it. You know, and I've been so shocked. Everybody I've asked has said yes so far. So. Wow. Is it, you know, I mean, I've been doing this like three years. Is it like, are you in that addictive stage? Cause it does get addicting. You're like, I've had people on that. If you told me like Sally, Jesse, is just an example that I mean, what that's happening. Are, are you in that addicting stage now of like, wait, like I am going to, DM Diane Keaton or, you know, you just, that night you wake up thinking like, wait, I have another one for the list. It's not addictive for me. It's more like, um, uh, the best way I can describe it is like, I'm just driven to, to have these conversations with people who I admire. So it's not like collecting him, you know, for me, it's more just like connecting, not collecting, connecting. And so that, that that's what drives me right now is like the fact that I could get 30 minutes face to face, even though it's on computer, but face to face with, with some of these people, uh, um, makes me feel like, oh, God, it's going to sound so stupid, but it just makes me feel like I'm in the right spot. You know, like this is exactly where I should be. 
I could see that because it's it's a real conversation. You know, yeah, it's a business and sometimes maybe they phone it in, but not really, right? Like it's a real, you're staring into a computer, it's 30 minutes or more and it's a real yeah. thing. You're asking it's real like our questions. Con- yeah, it's like our conversation here, you know? I mean, you could probably like fake it and do a song and dance for like the first minute and a half, but that's going to get exhausting after a while. So we can, and not that we did that. I'm saying like, it's we're incapable of doing that at the end of the day if you if you are sitting face to face just you and another person you're going to have some sort of real moment you're going to uncover something that you know we've never said before or thought we've never expressed before and so it's going to be insight into that person that no one's ever had before that's how i feel that that's today. that is maybe what i'm what really is turning me on that i'm addicted to is sort of like getting to a place that, that these people have never shown the world before on a platform like this I would agree. And I think I, personally, I took that from your Chelsea Handler. I haven't listened to your newest one with Guy, but I took that. I mean, you know, we've all heard interviews with Chelsea Handler and I took stuff away I've never heard. What do you feel, you know, having, you're welcome. What do you feel having been in the E! family about like the Kardashians? Do you want to have any of them on your podcast? Yes, I, I just was texting with Chris uh, two days ago. Uh, I love them. You know, I used to go to the Christmas parties, which is hilarious and i write about them in the book um um they are the the, what they have achieved is like next level crazy i was there we started chelsea lately i think the same year they started kardashians i think it was the same year and so as like i kind of knew them and then they went from like you know oh yeah 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 that family that's doing that thing to then like oh they're super famous you know to billionaires to like, what the what, you know? And, but the thing about them all, my experience has been, they're so sweet. One time I was on a private jet flying to New York, Chelsea, Chris Jenner, um, it was Kat Sadler and uh, Kim Kardashian. And, and they got there right, like last, you know, not late, but we were like, hello, private jet. I'm like, there. can I get there an hour earlier? Push every button, you know, it's not normal life for me. And so they come and, Kim hands me this bag and I'm like, what is this? She goes, well, we stopped and got salad. So I just thought maybe you'd be hungry. What? She got me a salad. <laughs> I mean, like that, that's what I mean. Like they're just nice. Um, so I'm happy to report they're still nice, even at this at crazy atmospheric level. And they work. I mean, that's a thing. Like they are workers, you know, it's not like anything's being like, they're real true workers. But let me promise you, I would not work. If I, if my first billion, I'll tap out. Promise you. I promise you I'm going to be right behind you. <laughs> I'll probably still do the podcast because I love it so much. You know what I mean? But, and I would do things that, that I really wanted to do, but I wouldn't feel the pressure, you know, and I, it would be nice to be real or real picky. What's it like riding at a private jet, you know, 3000 miles with Kris Jenner and Kim Kardashian? Like, do you chill? Do you relax? Do you yeah, talk? we fell asleep, like the chairs turned into little things. And, and there was one point where, Chris Jenner, she's like, um, Chris said, anybody want a drink? And, uh, you know, it was me and Chelsea Handler. So we're like, hello. Yeah, sure. And she's like, I got it. And because she said, I used to be a flight attendant. So she kept making like drinks and bringing them around, checking on everybody. Is that crazy? Yeah. You wouldn't expect Chris Jenner to be doing <laughs> yeah. drink. Yeah, but she was great. Really. She has a future if she wants it. <laughs> Could you tell in those early days that he, like you said, like you all started, like, could you tell like, wait, there is a buzz around this family or, you know, is hindsight just 2020 and, you know, no, making I mean, you, too you, much. I remember I was in Dantana's in West Hollywood. It was Lara Spencer from Good Morning America and Chris Jenner and me, and we were having dinner and the door opened. And Chris goes, oh, my daughters are going to stop by. And the door opened up and it was, I think it was Courtney and Kim walked in and all the flash bulbs from outside were going crazy as the paparazzi was taking the picture. And I remember thinking like, oh, oh, okay. That, that, that's where they are now. You know, this is early, early on. Wow. How did you, well, first of all, congratulations. You're almost up to your six month wedding anniversary. Yeah, thank you. How did, you're welcome. How did you guys decide to have Drew Barrymore as the flower girl? Well, it happened on the show. Uh, you know, we were just talking about my wedding as we were planning it and, and uh, something, some story we did and about a flower girl or something. And, and she was like, do you have a flower girl yet? And I was like, no, you should do it. And she's like, are you really asking me? And I was like, are you really saying that you would do it? And she was like, oh my God, I'd be so honored. And it was kind of like, ha 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 And then as we were planning the wedding, 
it sort of came up. I was like, were you joking? And she was like, I am not joking. Why, why would she think I was joking? I would be so, I no, you said I was. And I never thought she would actually do it. Not that she would ever cancel on me. I just was fully prepared to get the call of, oh my God, I want to be there, but it's just not going to work. I was absolutely, until day of. And then she was, she helped, she showed up. She was there in Puerto Vallarta. It was not an easy trip from Mexico. And she was so lovely and sweet. And she spoke at the wedding too. And, you know, I think about people like Drew who are that iconic. If they go into an event like that, how do they make it not about them? And she, she is like one of the biggest stars in the world. And she did her flower duty, made her speech. And, but it was, she just kept herself small and observed, you know, she was watching everything. And she sent me the sweetest video the next day, recounting all the other speeches and her favorite parts. And she just was a guest and the flower girl, you know, and, and if you didn't know better, you wouldn't know it was Drew Barrymore. It was, it was an amazing thing to see. Right. That was one of my questions. Like, how do you go to that and not make it about you? Not that she's that person.